Good day. My name is Purim Kadi, lecturer in the School of Accounting, Economics and Finance at the University of KwaZulu-Natal. Um, today we'll be looking at paper two on your examination preparatory workshop. What's in store today is uh, we'll be looking at question one, your reconciliation, both bank reconciliation and debtors reconciliation. Uh, we'll be looking at the September 2019 question paper. If you may have it handy, that will help quite a lot though I will be up, uh, putting the, uh, the questions um, uh, on my slides. There's also question two, which are cash budgets. Those are easy marks, easy uh, uh, topic to wrap your head around and understand. Uh, and also question three, cost accounting. Those two will be coming from your September 2020 preparatory examination uh, paper. Okay. Question one, when we look at bank reconciliation and debtors reconciliations, first and foremost, um, the question is already provided there. It, it starts off by easing you in with a little bit of theory. Um, uh, as I always say, these are easy marks, um, um, uh, four marks that you wouldn't want to miss, four marks that will make a huge difference uh, uh, toward getting your desired uh, marks. All right, a stale check, one that is more than six months old, must be cancelled in. Now, a stale check is a check which ideally more than six months, meaning that the payer issued the check, however, the payee has not managed to cash the check as yet. Now, the payer when they issue the check, they record the check under the cash payments journal. However, now if they, we've discovered that the check is now stale and can never be uh, 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 honored by the banks, that check is no good and therefore needs to be reversed. Now, if you could understand that when we initially issued the check, we used, we issued the check and we recorded it under our cash payments journal. Now when we're reversing it, it makes sense for us to reverse it under our cash receipts uh, 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 journal. Also, um, the next question looks at a debit or a credit balance in the bank statement indicates an overdraft. That is a debit. Now, when you look at the balance and the bank statement, when you, when you, you, you know yourself, whenever you receive uh, your bank statement, all the amounts that are, are, are an outflow to your bank statement, not the bank account, the T account, but the bank statement, uh, the document that you receive from the bank, uh, they debit your account to reduce it and they credit the account to, uh, 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 or rather the statement to increase it. A debit or a credit note is a source document for goods returned to a debtor. When we have sold goods now to debtors and these debtors uh, decide to return these goods to us, we issue what we call a credit note. So we credit their account accordingly. And a cash discount or a discount allowed is often uh, is offered when accounts are settled within a certain date. That's easy enough. That is a, a discount allowed. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is what we call a bank reconciliation statement. Before we dive straight to it, I do like to give the behind the scenes of, of what is a bank reconciliation? Why do we do it? How do we do it? And so forth, so that you can clearly understand and not uh, uh, memorize as to when I get a transaction like this on a bank reconciliation statement, this is what I'm gonna do. I fell um, uh, uh, in, into that trap up until I decided to say, look, let me sit down and understand what is this whole thing around bank reconciliation? Why do we do it? How often do we do it? And what's the aim of actually having a bank reconciliation statement? That is what I'm gonna tell you now. We're looking at two um, uh, sources here. We've got what we call the cash book. That is your cash receipts journal and your cash payments journal. When I say that is your, it means you as a business would have prepared those uh, uh, documents. Whenever you make a payment, 
you record it under a cash payments journal. Whenever you receive a payment, you record it under a cash receipts journal. And then from those two uh, documents, you will, have, you will then prepare a bank account, a T account. That bank account will ideally give you a, a, a sort of like, uh, will gouge as to how your bank account balance should be. Now, when I say it gives you an indication of how your bank balance should be, it's not always the case because normally when you now receive your bank statement, which is an external document that is sent out by, the, by your bank, giving you uh, a rundown of all the transactions that have uh, uh, gone through uh, your bank, it's normally not the same balance, meaning that your cash book and the bank account as per the, the, uh, the ones that have been prepared by your in-house accountant is normally not the same with your bank statement. There's usually differences um, and that is expected. The bank, the, the bank reconciliation is done monthly because obviously you would understand that your bank would normally send your bank statement on a monthly basis to give you that rundown of the transactions within uh, that month. And therefore, it is very important for us to then reconcile the two sources of document because they would not be speaking the same language. The one would be saying um, X amount um, uh, is supposed to be the balance, whereas when the bank statement comes back, it states a different amount as a balance. Now, there are various other steps that, needed, that needs to be taken in order to do a bank reconciliation statement. The first step, obviously, is to compare your bank statement with the cash book. That's your first point of departure. You take your cash book that you have prepared or your in-house accountant has prepared, and then you take this external document that you receive from your bank, and then you compare the two, all right? Now, when you compare these two, as expected, there will be differences. Now, you need to identify the differences in the cash book and in the bank statement. What is in the cash book and what's not in the bank statement or what's in the bank statement and what we have not recorded in our cash book, okay? Now, identifying differences in the cash book and the bank statement, there are four possible areas where differences may occur. I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of these uh, differences. One, it could be that in the bank statement credit column, um, there is an entry, but that's not in our cash book on the debit column. All right. It means that there's money that has gone through our bank account. We were not aware of that amount, and therefore it's not recorded in our cash receipts journal. Amounts like interest on credit balances. From time to time, banks will reward you for keeping a favorable bank balance. Um, also, deposits and internet transfer made by parties directly into the bank account. If somebody owes us money and they decide to pay us at any given point in time, they will not necessarily all the time notify us or send us proof that they have paid. But we will see that from our bank statement when we receive it that, oh, a debtor X has, or has now decided to pay us. Um, other, another difference would be, um, it could be a transaction that is in the bank statement on the debit side, but not in the cash book on the credit side. Um, these are um, uh, accounts or uh, things like your bank charges. Not all businesses or uh, um, even yourself, you wouldn't know your bank charges for the month uh, or correctly, um, uh, uh, um, um, you know, know or calculate. It's the bank that does it and then they just charge your account. You will only know how much bank charges have been charged to you when you receive the bank statement. Interest on overdraft unpaid or dishonored checks. 
um, previously deposited. It means that if somebody decided to pay us, we will record that person in our cash uh, receipts channel. But then when we present that check it, uh, and it is dishonored by the bank for whatever reason, it could be for um, it, the insufficient funds um, on the side of the payee and so forth, uh, we may not know that uh, 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 immediately, but we will only know that when the bank uh, uh, gives us a bank statement and says, look, we couldn't honor the check because that person who attempted to pay you as the business doesn't have any funds in their account. Stop orders or debit orders as well. Another difference would be in the cash book, debit side, but not in the bank statement. So deposits made by the firm, but not yet recorded by the bank. Those timing differences. If we know that we have received a certain amount, uh, probably a day before month end, we will record it accordingly in our cash book. But if it is um, um, an amount that we receive, probably maybe an EFT payment, it hasn't cleared in our bank as yet, there's going to be that timing difference. It's not going to appear immediately in, in our bank statement. Or if it is a, 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 a check um, um, that we haven't cashed, but we've already recorded that, that check in our cash book, but not necessarily cashed that check, that will also uh, create a timing difference. And then the last one is, it's, if something is in the cash book on the credit side, but not in the bank statement on the debit column. Uh, these uh, the likes of checks paid by the firm, but not yet presented to the bank for payment. So if we know that we've paid somebody, um, uh, but they have not been presented to the bank, meaning the bank doesn't know that we have paid a, 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 a certain person or a business because that check has not been presented to our bank and they will then need to um, 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 credit our bank, um, I mean debit our bank accordingly. All right. Now, the third step would be to update the cash book. These are items in the bank statement that are not in the cash book other than bank errors, obviously, must simply be entered into our cash book. This is the easy part. If it's something that's sitting in our bank statement that we are not aware of, we just simply record it in our books because we have access to our books, which is the cash book, cash assist journal, cash payments journal. We have access to those. Our in-house account accountant maintains those. So we just record it as normal. And then the fourth step would be to Complete the bank reconciliation statement. Now, this is for entries that appear in the cash book, but do not appear in our bank statement. If we know for sure that there is a check that we have issued, but it hasn't been presented for payment, that check would be sitting in our CPJ, Cash Payments Journal. But if the person whom we've given the check to has decided not to present the check to our bank as yet. It wouldn't appear in our bank statement um, as yet. So we will then cannot, unfortunately, alter the bank statement because that is an official document from the bank. But anything that we want to do for, uh, to our bank statement, we then do it in the bank reconciliation statement. I normally like to say, um, a bank reconciliation is just an extension of your bank statement. So you have this document that you don't have any control over, that is the bank statement. Therefore, you will need an extension to that document, something that will speak to that document that you ideally want to wanna, um, uh, alter but cannot because it is an official document from the bank. That is the bank statement. So anything that you want to do there, you can only do it in the bank reconciliation statement. Also, take note of errors. Errors could be on either side. It could be the bank that has made the error, or it could have been us that has made the error. Well, you will see just now when we do um, uh, the next question. Post-dated checks. These are checks which are drawn uh, uh, the drawer will write out the check today, but date it in the future, meaning it cannot be cashed so far up until such 
a date. And a stale check, obviously, is one that I've, uh, I've explained, a check that is six months and over. All right. Now, the question is presented over there. You are, you are provided with the information from Glenwood uh, uh, Trader on 30 June 2019. Um, that's the month, the end of the month that we, we, we are concerned with. And you need to prepare a bank reconciliation for 30 June 2019. You are presented with the information. The information that is presented to you, obviously, is an extract from the bank re reconciliation from the previous month, which is May. 2019 and there are various other transactions um, um, in there. Now when you um, um, are presented with a question like this I always like to stress read the entire question, go through the question, read all the transactions and when you do that make notes to yourself to say this transaction, where is it going to affect? Is it going to affect the bank reconciliation statement? Meaning you want to correct the bank. You are speaking directly to the bank on the bank statement. Or does it affect our cash book, which is the cash receipts journal and the cash payment journal? You can actually um, um, uh, do that even in your, in, in, in your question paper and just write on the side um, and say, okay, this one is going to affect whichever because you need to then collate the entire information and prepare the bank reconciliation statement. Okay, for example, you can clearly see that check 402 dated 1 November 2018 is stale. That check is eight months old. That bank will never honor that check. All right, so it is a stale check. We need to cancel that check in the cash receipts journal. We issued that check. But um, when we issued the check, the payee, the person we, we're trying to pay, has not presented the check for payment. And therefore, it, we need to cancel that check under the cash receipts journal. It just gives it that uh, uh, zero effect to it because it's sitting on, my, on our CPJ but now we're now reversing it on our CRJ, okay? The next thing is we've got an outstanding deposit of 15,000, which appeared in the bank statement on 28 uh, June 2019. That 15,000 outstanding deposit stems back, obviously, from our May 2019 uh, bank reconciliation. Now it appears. It means that you just need to... Um, um, it's not going to appear as outstanding deposit anymore. Now the bank is now speaking the same language that we were speaking in May 2019. The next one is you've got an outstanding deposit of 25000 which did not appear on the bank statement for June 2019. An investigation revealed that this money was never deposited. The cashier has left the country and cannot be traced. All right, so you are now sitting in the cash book with a receipt that you have recorded, but the accountant did not deposit the money. We cannot get hold of this person, so the likelihood of us getting that amount is zero to none. So what are you going to do? You need to reverse it. Reverse it where? In the cash payments journal. Okay, um, also you've got a check 614 for 1,800 rand, which was presented for payment. That's fine. It, mean, it just means that the bank statement and the bank are now speaking the, the same um, language. Okay. And then an unknown debit entry of 8,000 was illegally taken from Glenwood uh, Traders Bank account. The bank will reverse this amount in the next bank statement. So what that tells us is that um, there is an amount that was illegally taken from our bank and it is therefore reflected in the bank statement that there is a debit of 8,000 rand. However, with communication with, the, with our bank, we discovered that no, that amount needs to be reversed as it was illegally taken from our account. So the the issue here is not with our books, but with the bank statement. So whatever that you need to do to, 
to correct um, uh, uh, that illegal transaction that has taken place, you need to correct it in the bank reconciliation statement by crediting the amount wrongly debited. Because our bank statement has been debited, we need to then credit it uh, uh, accordingly, the bank reconciliation statement that is. Next one is, you've got a check number 810 for trading stock pages from City Traders was recorded as 1,260 on the cash payments journal for June 2019. The bank statement for June 2019 reflected now the correct amount. So the correct amount is 1,620. So you just need to find the difference between the correct and the wrong amount and also now identify who made the error, which in this case, we made the error. Our in-house accountant recorded it uh, 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 incorrectly. Therefore, the difference of 360 needs to be recorded in our cash payments journal. So we're increasing the 1,260 they already recorded by 360 so that we match the correct transaction as recorded by the bank. The next transaction says check number 81821, sorry, for 600 rand issued to super stores in settlement of an account appears neither in the cash payments journal nor in the bank statement. All right. So in, in that case, what do you need to do? Um, we need to record that amount because we haven't uh, recorded it. So as the bank. They need to do that as well. So the bank reconciliation outstanding check, it needs to be recorded there. Age, you've got a check number 910 for 2,400 rand, which was issued to chat suppliers in part payment of the account. Now the check was lost by chat suppliers and payment on the check was stopped. I, I want to stop right there because there's sort of like two transactions that you have to do there. The first transaction is you have to reverse the check that is lost, okay? Because each check has got a check number. That's we, when we record it, we've got the dedicated check number that we, that, that we use in our cash book. So the check 910 needs to be reversed in our cash receipts journal. It's a check that we've paid. The person whom we've given the check to lost it, won't be able to pay it. Um, I mean, to, 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 to cash that check. And then, subsequent to that, what we did is we then replaced that check with check number 937. Now, the check that we're using now to replace the lost one needs to be recorded in the, in the CPJ, in the cash payments journal. Now, a deposit of 8,900 rand made on 30 June 2019 does not appear in the bank statement. So what do we do? you record it in your bank reconciliation statement because we know that we've got this deposit but the bank has not managed to pick that deposit as yet. Could be because of time differences that I, that I mentioned uh, earlier on. All right, so you record it accordingly in the bank reconciliation statement because you're trying to correct your bank statement. And also, your bank statement reflects a favorable balance of 11,300 rand. So that is your opening, uh, uh, that's your credit balance, uh, uh, that's your uh, um, uh, uh, bank statement balance as at 30 June uh, 2019. That's your point of departure now when you want to um, uh, uh, prepare your bank reconciliation statement. Because that's what the bank is telling you, that the balance and then every else that needs to be debited or credited you need to start from there after taking all of the above into account the bank account in the general ledger of Greenwood traders on 30 June 2019 reflected a balance of so we need to calculate now the balance our balance as per our cash book um, um, that's what the question is trying is, is six to 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 um, get from us so there are two methods in which you can do this. I talked about the credit balance as per bank statement as a point of departure. You put that in your credit, in your credit side. It is clearly stipulated there that it is a credit. Uh, it's a favorable balance. If it's favorable in the bank statement, it means it, 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 you've, it's on the credit side. All right. Um, 
Then the next thing is you've got that outstanding deposit that the bank has not picked up on as yet. You know that that amount was deposited. It just hasn't been, uh, 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 it's not reflecting in the bank. So it's 8,900 rand. And then the credit amount wrongly debited. You remember that amount where they debited our account wrongly? And then the bank needs to reverse it. It's that 8,000 rand. And then you've got your outstanding uh, checks, meaning those checks that we know that we've, we've issued but have not been presented to our bank for payment. 3,200, 600, 2,400. Now, the two sides, you just need to add and find out uh, which side is bigger. Obviously, the credit side of the bank reconciliation is bigger. And then you just minus your uh, uh, 2,400, 600, and 3,000. Uh, 200 to find now our balance as per bank account. So our in-house accountant should now uh, um, be in a position to uh, 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 make our bank account, which comes from the cash payments journal and the cash receipts journal, to be at, at, at debit balance favorable at 22,000 rand. There's a second method in which you can do this, more or less the same. Again, the point of departure is your credit balances per bank statement, 11,300, your outstanding deposit, your check that was wrongly debited, your outstanding checks, it, that should give you the, the balance as per bank account. You just add as normal. Whatever is, is positive, you, you add it. Whatever is negative, you deduct it um, as normal. All right. Now, I just want to quickly recap um, uh, in as far as bank reconciliation statements is concerned. You have two documents here, or you've got two sources. You've got the cash book. Your cash book is the one that you control as the business. You prepare it yourself. It's the cash assist journal, the cash payments journal. And you've got this external document on this side that comes from the bank. And you need to compare the two and then uh, decipher uh, um, uh, as to where are these differences coming from and solve all of these differences so that these two sources can speak to each other. Okay. The next thing that we're going to look at is what we call a data reconciliation and age analysis um, of Birdswood traders. Uh, they sell material for cash and also on credit. Obviously, once you start selling on credit, you are bound to have debtors in the business. But the, um, the credit terms are 30 days. So they assume that people who owe um, bears or traders will pay them ideally within the 30 days. Um, and they budgeted that 80 of their debtors, 80 percent rather of their debtors will adhere to these credit terms. Um, there's various questions over there. Uh, um, I'm just going to jump straight to the first uh, uh, question. Or rather, let's start with the information you're given at A, the age analysis. B, you are given the balance of the debtor's control, meaning the T account is at 30 June 2019. You're also given the balance according to the debtor's uh, ledger. Again, here you're looking at two pieces of, 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 of information or sources of information. You've got the debtor's control account and the debtor's list. The debtor's list basically gives you all the list of people that owe us as the business and the amounts that they owe us. All right. However, on the other side, the debtor's control now is a T account. It then collects all the people that owe us money versus those who have decided to pay us. Those who owe us money obviously will increase the debtor's control on the debit side. Those who decide to pay us, they will decrease it accordingly on the credit side. If, for example, a debtor decides to return goods, um, that will also decrease uh, 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 the debtor's control accordingly on the credit side. Debtor's control is an asset account. Assets increase on the debit side and they decrease on the, on the credit side. But just understand that this is an addition, uh, the debtor's control, it just sums up all the people that owe you, whereas the debtor's list gives you per person who owes me X amount of money. 
Y amount of money, all right? Um, and then the following errors and omissions were discovered and must be corrected. Again, go back to your question paper, write pay on each and every transaction to say, where does this transaction affect? Does it affect my debtor's control or my debtor's list? All right, now ideally, again, these two should speak the same language, meaning if um, we add all the, our debtors in our debtors list and we get the, the, the total at 20,000, our debtors control balance should also be 20,000. All right, but that's not always the case. Um, you will see why that's, that's, that's always not the case. Um, the first one says the debtor's journal was overcast by 4,000 rand. All right. So the debtor's journal speaks to your debtor's control account. So we have now, we've overcast it by 4,100 rand. So it means that the error or the mistake is sitting in our debtor's control. That's where we need to fix it, not the debtor's list. The debtor's list is fine. And then goods sold on credit to P.S. Pillay were incorrectly posted into account of T.G. Nyembe, 7,600 rand. Now, with this transaction, the debtor's control is fine, but the error now is in our debtor's list. It's P.S. Pillay um, um, who bought goods to us on credit, but we recorded the 7,600 rand under TG Nyembe's uh, uh, name. So we need to re re uh, correct that in our debtor's list. Also, an allowance on damaged goods delivered to SM Mazebugo of 1,400 rand was posted in the wrong side of his account. Again, that's the debtor's list. That's where the problem is. Our debtor's control is fine. Um, so it means that in our debtor's list, we posted that 1,400 rand on the wrong side of uh, SM Mazibugo. It's an allowance for damaged goods. So there were some damaged goods, um, and therefore we said, look, the 1,400 rand, it's fine. Uh, 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 the value of those goods, you don't have to pay us. You don't owe us. But instead of us accordingly decreasing the amount that is owed by him um, or, or, or her, we actually increased it even further. So we made the problem even worse. Um, 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 you will see how we're going to correct that. And then an invoice issued to TM Sueli for 2,300 rand was not entered in the books of uh, or, or it was not entered in the books of Birdswood traders. So we issue an invoice. When you issue an invoice, it's an indication to say, you owe me money. So we issued an invoice to TM Sueli for 2,300 rand, and we didn't record it uh, in the box. So what we need to do is we need to record it accordingly in the debtor's control and also in the debtor's list, because it's just not recorded anyway. Um, and then a check for 8,700 rand received from P.S. Pillay in settlement of an invoice of, for 9,000 rand was returned by the bank due to insufficient funds. No entry was made for this, okay? So P.S. Pillay attempted to pay us, gave us a check. He, was, he or she was owing us 9,000 rand. The 8,700 rand that ideally speaks to the fact that we may have allowed a discount to him because he's paying us. So there is that discount of 300 rand. So we said, we know that you're owing us nine, but you can pay us 8.7, that's fine. Uh, the discount we, we, we're giving you for early payments or whatever the case uh, uh, may be. But when we now present this check for payment, um, uh, the bank then fails to honor um, uh, uh, teams, uh, or, or rather, Pillay's bank fails to honor that check because the bank is saying, look, this person doesn't have money in his account, in his OIA account, so we, we can't give you. So what we need to do is when we received uh, the check, this is what we did. We recorded the check accordingly in the cash receipt journal and we uh, decreased 
his, uh, uh, the, uh, his, his debtor's list, the balance as per debtor's list, and also the debtor's control. But now we need to reverse the whole thing and increase um, um, our debtor's control and also I I the debtor's list accordingly. All right, now goods sold on credit to J.P. Botha for 4,700 was correctly entered in the debtor's journal. So the debtor's journal is fine, meaning the debtor's control is fine, but was posted in her account in the debtor's ledger as 7,400 uh, rand. So there's that error in the debtor's list that we did. So we need to go back and correct that um, accordingly. Now, when we, you've already done all of that, you've already put all your information to say this affects my debtor's control, this transaction affects my debtor's list, so you know we, we, which direction you're going per or, uh, 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 transaction or per error or omission. Um, then we'll dive straight into the questions. It says briefly explain why the balance of the debtor's control account should correspond to the total of list of the debtors. I more or less have given the answer away here. Um, when I said these are two sources of information um, and they are compiled from uh, uh, the very same information, so they should ideally speak the same language. But let's see what reasons are there. The debtor's control account is a summary of all debtor's accounts in the debtor's ledger. So the debtor's control, as I said, is a sum of all the debtor's accounts in the debtor's ledger. Therefore, they are both compiled and completed from the same source document and they should speak the same um, uh, language. Now calculate the correct closing balance of the debtor's control account as at 30 June 2019. So you've got 175,000 700 rand. That's the balance of the debtor's control on 30 June 2019. Um, it amounted to 175,700. That's your point of departure. The next thing that you need to do, you remember those um, 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 uh, transactions in where you've written debtor's control, that this affect my debtor's control. You've got your 4,000 um, um, 100 rand over there in Roman figure one, the debtor's journal where we overcast the, it by 4,100 rand, you need to deduct it, um, that, that 4,100 rand. You also have that uh, 2,300 rand in, 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 in Roman figure uh, four where a check was not entered in the books of bad traders and we said we're going to add it into the books of um, uh, birds traders, both in the debtor's control and also in the debtor's list. And then you've got that 9,000, the check that was dishonored, uh, Pillay's check. Now, one person could say it's the 8,700 plus the 300. That is correct. That, that, that is fine. But ideally, the final effect is, though we given a, a, we allowed a discount to Pillay, the mere fact that we were not able to cash his or her check, the entire amount that he or she initially owed us needs to be recorded back. And the effect is the entire 9,000 rand therefore needs to be recorded back. And the balance will then sit the balance of the debtor's control will then sit nicely at 182,900 rand. I also did a T account so that you can clearly see all the debits and the credits, how they fit in. You've got your balance of 175,700. Uh, you've got your bank of 4,100 on the credit side. Then you've got your uh, Team Swaley's um, uh, uh, amount of 2,300 rand that we didn't record. Then you've got your dishonor check of 9,000 rand. And you, 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 obviously you, you, you close off this account to find out what's the balance carried down and that's 182,000 which uh, uh, then subsequently becomes our balance brought down. You can check yourself and, ma and make sure that you've, you, you've done everything uh, uh, correctly. Now when you prepare the debtors list again, you go back 
to where you have written debtors list, debtors list, this transaction would affect my debtors list and so forth. And then you just list all your uh, 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 debtors and accordingly um, um, uh, work out what's the effect per uh, data as per uh, uh, your list. So as Mazibugo, um, it balance is sitting at 46,500 rand, but we made a mistake there in Roman figure three. What we did was an allowance for damaged goods we, we was, in, was wrongly posted on the wrong side. It means that we further charged him uh, 1,400 rand. So the first entry is you need to deduct the 1,400 rand. So you're bringing it back. You are correcting the mistake that we made. And then you deduct the 1,400 rand again, which is now the actual allowance that we are giving to him. All right? Or her. Then uh, Tinyembe, it's 31,800 rand. You remember uh, uh, Roman Fika 2, we recorded the 7,600 rand for goods that we sold to PS Pile. Therefore, you deduct that accordingly. TS Msueli, 27,000. You add the 2,300 rand. You remember it wasn't entered anyway. So it's, we add it in our debtor's control. We also add it in our debtor's list under his name. JP Porter, 63,200. Therefore, we deduct the 2,000. Um, um, 700 accordingly, which is that uh, difference uh, where we wrongly, um, or, or, or rather, we was, it was correctly entered into the debtor's journal, therefore we didn't do anything there, but we incorrectly recorded it in our debtor's ledger, so it affected our debtor's list. Um, so the difference between the two amounts, 4,700 and 7,400 rand, is 2,700. And that needs to be deducted from JP Porter's account. And lastly, it's, you've got 8,600 rand. Then you add the 7,600 rand that was erroneously added to T. Nyembe's account. You also add the 8,700 rand plus 300 rand. If you want to put it like that, or you can just add the entire 9,000 rand because of the dishonored check um, 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 that was not honored by his um, account, I mean by his bank. And then when you study the information A and C below, then answer the following questions. Does Burswood traders have effective control over their debt is explained by quoting figures to motivate your answer. When you have effective control over your debtors, um, it means that you are able to um, collect when you are supposed to collect, ideally even before that, uh, that, that that's even recommended. You have a collection period that you allow, which is 30 days for this company. So you want to collect your monies within 30 days. The earlier, the better. Um, but obviously, it's not always the case. So that's why you need to always calculate and see if you are able to have um, effective control over this very crucial uh, uh, function, because it could spell out whether do you have cash available or not. Okay? So you have um, the 30, you, you need to look at your age analysis, because that now gives you the total amount of all debtors, and then it then gives you what are the current debtors, uh, meaning for the month, what are those uh, um, uh, uh, that are within 30 days, 60 days, and 90 days. The, you can do it in, 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 in two ways. The first way is to add the current and the 30, um, um, and then divide it by the total uh, 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 balance of debtors. Um, uh, obviously, at a, a percentage, that is 32% of debtors keep to credit terms of 30 days, meaning it's only a mere 32% of debtors that are able to pay within the 30 days. Or else, if you want to do it the other way, where, where you look at now uh, the debtors that 
pay us relatively longer than the 30 days, that is 72,600 plus 54,900. So 68% of debtors exceed the payment period of 30 days. Now state two um, uh, actions that bears with traders could take in order to encourage debtors to settle their accounts according to credit. They really love this question. It's a very nice theory question. So it's, it, it literally is going to take you less than a minute to go through or wrap your head around this question. Um, what can you do in order to collect your monies in a relatively shorter period? You can issue monthly statements. When you send a statement to somebody that owes you, it acts as a reminder that, oh, wait a minute, I'm actually owing money. Maybe I should start making payments. Send reminders through text or email. Offer discounts to debtors who pay in time. Say, look, if you pay within 30 days, I'm going to offer you a certain amount of discount or a certain percentage discount. That will encourage your debtors to then stick to that uh, payment term that is desired to you as the business. Charge interest on overdue accounts. This is a famous one. If you go over the amount that is allowable or, or that is allowed by businesses, they will charge you interest. So your debt will relatively gradually go up and get increased by the interest that they are charging you because you're not paying within the, the, the time that they've given you. Um, lastly, you can halt selling to debtors until overdue accounts are, are settled. If somebody is not paying you, you can say, look, I'm not going to give you extend credit to you until such time you settle all your overdue um, accounts. Thank you.